Welcome everyone to Tabletop Anthologies. We're here today with another Call of Cthulhu session. I will be your keeper of arcane lore, arcane lore this evening. Um, we have Alpha Wolf Zero and Preacher back with us today. They're playing the characters Earl Walters and James Oliver again. Uh, since the last scenario, The Haunting, it's been about three months and they've taken some time to uh, recover and do some studying of their own. Uh, Want to explain a little bit about that? So James, uh, James's character, in, in the time that it's been since our last session, has uh, has really been uh, kind of taking on your normal private investigator cases. He's been trying to uh, more or less keep the firm afloat, keep the money kind of rolling in, while uh, while Earl seems to be studying more into into the supernatural or into the uh, the other side of things. Um, James himself is is kind of in a spot where uh, in in a previous history he would have been a very you know um, I have to lay my eyes on it kind of guy to be able to to believe it, but now he's more attuned to the things of the supernatural and starting to wonder if there are you know things that that can't be seen by the naked eye and and otherworldly things such as spirits and and, and the like. But um, you know they they've seemed to uh, have. Uh, akin themselves as more of, of paranormal investigators as, as opposed to private investigators. Um, though the, the sign on the door still says Oliver and Company PI, um, the, the PI is, is more of a, a paranormal investigator than a private investigator, but they don't market themselves as such. It's, it's more of a, a for, for those who know, they know, and for those who don't, we're a normal investigation company. Great. Sounds good. What about uh, Earl? Um, Earl, what are what are you doing in this downtime? And um, James, did you uh, mention your your recovery there from that incident? <laughs> oh no. Um, since uh, since the last session, you know, I, I've I've spent a, a quite a bit of time in uh, the local hospital recovering from wounds succumbed in the Corbett House. Um, I uh, I received a a pretty pretty serious wound, knife wound to the chest in the Corbett house and uh, spent probably about six weeks in the hospital um, and uh, have, have full, since fully recovered of that and am ready to uh, take on anything that comes by us. What about Earl? What have you been doing in this time? Uh, in between checking on James in the hospital, uh, Uh -oh. Former you, case. you froze up. You gotta you gotta start over again. We heard James in the hospital. Okay. Um. So, in between checking on James in the hospital, um, and uh, while he's waiting on him to do all that, uh, and recover, uh, he received a phone call from Mister Knotts, who had uh, given him his uh mission from before and he had found Mr. Corbett's diary uh, in that cupboard we refused to look into and uh, I began to research it and read it and um, begin to um, really dive deeper into what it was that we experienced and look for any answers and after reading that book um Earl seems to seem to have uh been convinced that there is paranormal activity out there therefore starting their venture into the paranormal investigators uh career and once uh James got out of the hospital he taught him some of the things that he knew from the book and uh let him read the diary as well um to get a full grasp on the situation that we had just went through um he is he also checked up on um the husband and wife that were former owners of that house um and he also just has been trying to keep his nose to the ground and uh, searching for any cases uh whether it be through the police officer department or um through customers that uh that uh, had um, 
seemed a little bit off or odd trying to uh, put a stop to anything that may eventually cause what happened to the Corbett house to anybody else and anything that may have happened wants to stop that as well from happening to anybody else so he stocked up his car and uh, got in touch with some that may have had more experience with this and that's what he's done is he's been keeping his nose to the grind so right and uh, along with the, uh, the things that you read and studied in those Corbett diaries that, that were given to you you found a uh, spell in there and learned it called Call Forth the Opener of Ways so uh, maybe sometime in the future that might come in handy who knows but, uh, yeah. just one more of the uh, pieces of arcane lore that you've picked up along the way any more to come I'm sure so with that we are now beginning of September um, you know the end of summer so it's still pretty warm out here in Arkham uh, and you've been contacted by Enid Carrington to investigate vandalism at a construction site for a, a new building, a, a mansion she's building, that also has a rose garden behind it. She explains that an expensive statue and a fountain at the center of this rose garden was toppled over. So she wants you to investigate that vandalism. However, the culprits left some odd rocks or minerals of some sort in the fountain. Um, but she means to explain those details in person when you show up at the construction site the next day. Uh, and this construction site is near Ipswich. In, or I'm sorry, in Ipswich. Ipswich. A hard city to say, I guess. <laughs> uh, which is located near, near Arkham and uh, is surrounded by salt marsh. Uh, but this odd detail in particular about these strange rocks or minerals it probably piques your interest in, in this job and that there's some oddity that you want to reach out and investigate further. And if you don't know already, it wouldn't take much research to learn that Enid is very independently wealthy. But she also married William Carrington, and he is a million, millionaire banking magnate. So there's probably some good money to be made here with this job. And some good contacts, possibly. So, I'm assuming the next morning you would uh, be traveling out to Ipswich, uh, but is there anything you would like to do in the meantime before then in Arkham? Uh, I wouldn't want to be doing anything, no, sir. Stocked and ready to go for anything. Maybe uh, throw some salt in the back there. Like get get a bunch of salt and put it in the trunk. Bags of salt. Yeah, and, and lots of occult uh, trinkets and possible weapons that may or may not work are probably all within your trunk there also. Yeah. Okay, so you depart Arkham driving down the road. It doesn't take far, take very long to get to Ipswich. You can smell the, uh, all of the decaying plant life from the salt marshes nearby as you're driving down the road. The air is very heavy and thick here and it's, it's rather warm. You come through some, uh, some trees down a, a small path that they don't quite have the road built there yet for this construction site. Uh, so you're heading down this path, and past these trees you see uh, the start of a mansion. There's a, a frame put up, a lot of construction is done so far. And as you're pulling towards this mansion, you can see further in the back uh, a very large fountain and a rose garden surrounding it. Um, so I, I'll actually give you a little handout here that, that might help you visualize it better. Should be able to see that. Yep. And I'll explain in more detail as you get down there. But uh, you've pulled up to the mansion now. What would you like to do? Uh, Enid has told you that she will likely be uh, down around the rose garden somewhere in the morning. Okay. And where we pulled up at is it on the outside of this main building, or yeah, is just, it just, just like to the east, style? basically, just northeast. Okay. Of it. Okay. So, uh, I guess we, 
come around the right there, um, or just come in straight through the building that's under construction and follow that trail around, all around to the Rose Garden. Uh, and where that fountain's at. Okay. Yeah, so um, as you're walking down towards the Rose Garden, you can see uh, an older woman, uh, probably late 50s, walking around the Rose Garden, and she's uh, instructing and, and possibly berating some of the construction workers that you see walking back and forth from the, the different buildings. Uh, when you're walking down to this Rose Garden, you can see there's a steel door um, up to the north, built into the uh, the side of the uh, the hill there, basically, which is directly under what looks like garage and stables. Um, as you're approaching, you can also see that this fountain, which is about 20 feet across, it's a rather large fountain, uh, has this very expensive looking statue that's toppled over. So Mrs. Carrington sees you approaching, and she looks up at you. So you finally arrived. Well, here's the centerpiece of my rose garden. Isn't it lovely? I'm Mrs. Enid Carrington, by the way. I'm sure you realize this. So you are uh, Mr. Walters and Oliver, I presume? Yes, ma'am, we are. Oliver and company at your disposal, ma'am. Ma'am, uh... Well... I, I hope you can catch these, these cretins that left this mess in the, the water of my fountain. I had the men re remove it so uh, they could get right to work on the repairs. They're, they're dragging their feet as it is. I want no further delay in this project. I expect to host many a society ball here. And she begins uh, to uh, direct you your attention over to this fountain. And you can see in the water, uh, there was, uh, there's a, something that was attached to the inside of the fountain. Uh, and she points that out as being um, an interesting point of this scene. Uh, there was some minerals of some sort left in this fountain. I, I, I'd mentioned this before. I've, I've locked them away in the cellar over here by, behind this steel door. Um, I can show you those, but would you like to, to take a look at this this mess here first, or, or what would you what would help you best, investigators? Um, I'd say one of one of us can go with you, ma'am, and go to the cellar. The other one investigates what what uh, is going on with these uh, with this fountain here. Uh, we we we're two people. We can split up our. Uh, our thing for just a little bit and uh, try and make the most of our time here. Okay. What do you say, James? I say that's a great idea. Won't you go with uh, Mrs. Carrington here, and I'll uh, I'll study the uh, the outside, see what I can see. Okay. <laughs> Very well. Follow me, Mr. Walters. Yes, um, ma'am. So before you oh. both leave the area there, um, go ahead and both of you do an intelligence roll. All right, so you both succeed. Um, you notice that uh, the statue, the way that it's laying there, it would have had to have been knocked sideways with considerable force. It's, it, there's pieces that are landing over, that have landed over 10 feet from its original position, and it's a very large marble statue. Do we get the sense of how high the statue is? Like, is it, was it like a 10 foot high or 15 foot high statue? Um, like, uh, where, where it's sitting or the actual height of the statue itself? Yeah, the height of the statue itself, based on that. I'm going like... Okay. Yeah, super no, like mathy here, but like based on the okay. trajectory of that stuff. Yeah, um, I, I don't have exact measurements for you, but I'd say the statue is probably six to seven feet tall and it's sitting on a pedestal. Um, so you would think that if someone were to knock over this heavy statue, it'd be laying pretty close to this pedestal. It's over 10 feet away though. Okay. So either someone carried it there and smashed it, or it was knocked directly off of there with a lot of a lot of force. 
Yeah. So we'll uh, we'll stay here with James first. Um, James, what would you look at like to look at in the fountain? Anything specific? Um. Yeah, I kind of want to look at. Um, first off, I want to know what the statue is is or what is what is it? Like, what is the actual statue itself? Is it like a, a like a god of some sort or what is it? So it's a marble statue that had been standing in the center of this fountain. It's shattered. It's half submerged in this calf deep water. <clears throat> um, the statue itself, uh, it's a Baroque statue. It depicted a young boy standing on giant shells holding a dolphin. Carved, carved from pure white marble, it looks like. Okay. Um, Getting on... a, close look at, a close look at it, you can tell it's, it's uh, very well done. This thing is very expensive. Probably costs more than what you make in a year or two at your you know, private investigation job. Okay. Um, is there anything like a sort of a, a plaque or anything along the base? Anything that's inscribed on it anywhere? Nothing like that, uh, but as you're looking around for some sort of plaque, you see that the fountain itself is damaged. Uh, the rim is cracked and chipped in two places about four feet apart. There are numerous, almost parallel gouges in the cement floor of it. They seem to vary from one foot to almost three foot in length. And those are located between the chipped rim and the center where the statue stood. So it looks like something had been like drug across it, almost like a claw mark or something, like almost like ditches across it or, or just chip marks in general. So if you take a closer look at those, you notice that um, these cracks and gouges, uh, they're made with relatively blunt tools. Um, okay. and whatever made these left no residue in them, it looks like. Okay. Um, there's this is actually it? near some of the bigger gashes is where the um, the rock formations were taken from, and you can still see some remnants of it. That it was it was actually attached to the fountain somehow. Okay, do I see anything like along inside the the water there? Is there anything that like doesn't? It looks kind of out of place as far as um, you know something that shouldn't have been there or something that isn't marble. Um, you know, nothing like that other than whatever this mineral stuff was that was attached. Um, okay. But you, you do take note of the, the height of the water, that it's only calf deep. Um, the rim actually comes up to nearly your waist. So it's maybe halfway full. If mm. that. Um, Is so there... Let's switch ahead. back to Earl now. Okay. Um, unless there was there anything else you wanted to do real quick. Uh, I just wanted to look along like that water trough and see if there was like a um, some sort of like a, a way that that water drains out by itself, or if the water head somehow came out on on its own somehow. Um, <clears throat> not quite understanding. There, but but in examining the the. Uh, uh, the way the actual water system in it works, you don't see any damage specifically to that. Um, the statue uh, itself didn't have anything routed through it. It was all uh, below the statue on the fountain. Okay. Yep. That's all. Okay. All right. So switching back to Earl, Enid walks over to this steel door to the north. Um, there are three men standing in front of it. There are construction workers at this site. Uh, it looks like they're kind of standing guard here, but they're all kind of relaxed and just sitting around. Uh, when they see Enid approaching, they snap up real quick and, and make sure, you know, back straight. They're standing guard for sure now when Enid gets close. Um, he kind of just waves them aside and, and steps through. Uh, you walk in, and this is a, a small cellar, as I had mentioned before. Uh, it looks like it's used as a workshop. There's uh, some tools in here, uh, a little bit more marble, some wrought irons, things to, to uh, maintain the, uh, the rose garden. On one of these rough workbenches, there's a um, an odd thing laying there that was taken out of this fountain. There's a uh, some tools there uh, and also a work lamp uh, above it. Uh, so to describe these a little bit better, Enid walks you over to this table, um, 
have a, a handout here for you that has a picture of them and a description. Um, so I think if you, on the top right of the window, if you click uh, text or image, it'll take you back and forth on it. Um, but they are close in texture and makeup to coral shells. Uh, it looks like a bunch of swollen, petrified bananas. There are four, four layers. Uh, yeah, let me see. Okay, there are four layers of five to six bananas, you know, uh, right. in quotes, each. Some of them have been broken off and the remains are off to the side. Each fruit-like thing looks like it is made of translucent mother of pearl, with the stems looking to ma be made of a blue granite colored coral. So it looks like a, um, like a clump of rock, kind of, with a bunch of these little banana-shaped gem-like things in it. Now this is very odd. Um... piece there that's that that's what we believe that that was broken off like these little pieces are broken off of right and it stands close to you watching as you're examining it and she answers yes all, all of these uh smaller pieces here broke off of the top of it i i assume it must have some sort of value and i but i i don't understand why the culprits would leave it here um over maybe you can find out for me how much something like this would cost. Okay, um, I'll, I'll do some research, ma'am. Uh, give me some time to do a little bit of research here, and uh, and I'll, I'll get back to you on an answer with that. And so basically what, I, what, what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to... Uh, I've kind of kept that diary brought that diary with me and I want to when she's not looking take it out and kind of like look and see if I can find anything drawing related or uh, okay met that may mention it something like these minerals or rock make, formations like this make a luck check because it's very unlikely <laughs> <laughs> all right but there's a chance nice nice Okay. Um, so there is mention of, and it's maybe just a sentence, half a sentence about some sort of cluster of mineral-like, uh, mineral-like crescent-shaped uh, objects, and it um, mentions something about. There's a uh, something contained inside of them, and that's about the best you can get. It, it's very, very vague and just barely mentioned. Uh, but you, you know, something in the back of your mind reminded you to go to this specific page, and you flip there, read the sentence, and you're reminded of that to, to make, take a closer look at these things. Okay, so I uh, I pick up one of the smaller pieces at first. And I want to take a closer look at it um, and maybe like kind of fiddle it around and see if I can see anything inside of it or um, deduce like what kind of rock or mineral it may have been, that kind of thing. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, give me a spot hidden roll. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you happen to have any sort of science or medicine skills? I don't. I don't think you do. But I don't think I do. Um, I definitely don't have any medicine. Okay. Um, that's fine. Um, so as you yeah. pick these up and you, you're getting a closer look at them, uh, because you pick them up, you've got it kind of close to that work light that's that's right there over the table. Um, and you can see that uh, you can kind of see through the surface of, of, of this thing. Uh, and it looks like the inside is filled with some sort of viscous fluid. And there's a solid blob floating in the middle of that fluid. Because whenever you, you know, manipulate it, turn a little bit, it all sloshes just a little bit. I want to take uh, my pocket knife out and see if I can, like, jab it. 
a little bit and maybe okay. see if some of that liquid can pour out and like maybe see if I can find a little container, like a little vial or something to put it in. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of maybe little jars or something sitting yeah. on the table. Um, so you take out your knife and go to stab at it and Enid kind of gasps, gasps and, and is about to speak up but she leans forward and seems really interested in what you're doing so she doesn't stop you and when you go to <laughs> press the knife into it doesn't seem like it's going to give at first, but then it pops through it. And this viscous fluid that you saw in there starts to, uh, starts to ooze out into this jar. Um, the contents inside pour into this jar, and it seems to, almost as soon as it touches the bottom of the jar, begins to disintegrate. And it starts to emit this really foul, sulfurous smell. Uh, and uh, so I quickly put the lid on it um, to stop that smell from getting out. Um, and in the back of my mind, this is this is how Earl's thinking. Sulfur. He remembers sulfur being something related to old demonic activity. Um, so he, that's 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 what he's thinking from the the lore that he's read over the past few months. And um, he doesn't like the, 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 the smell or sound of that um, or the thought of that. Um, and I look over to Enid and I'm like, ma'am, these, these minerals here, they're, they're not worth your, your trouble of trying to get rid of them. Um, this, this this could mean trouble for you. Um, trouble? They're what are they? They they just look like uh, like gems of some sort. Did you uh, did you smell that smell when that liquid poured into the jar, ma'am? I, I I did, unfortunately. So, what I'm thinking, ma'am, is that um, ma'am, let me ask you a question. Did you have you have you ever had any contacts with anybody from any sort of uh, a cult or make someone angry that's probably part of an occult cult. uh no it's it's strange that you ask that though my my son studies the occult and mysticism over at that miskatonic university i heard about that school uh heard there's a lot of weird people over there um Nothing against your son, though. No, of um, course not. I, I'd <laughs> rather, him, rather him here and take over the family business. But... <laughs> so, um, ma'am, uh, I believe that these rocks or minerals have something to do with an occult. Because it gave off a sulfurous smell. And sometimes whenever occult members are angry or try to seek vengeance they'll they'll do things like this and destroy someone's property uh so you're this saying means some that... some occult madman left this as a this as his ritual of some sort in the act of vandalism could be it's gonna take more investigating on my part ma'am but i'll i'll assure you i'll get to the bottom of it um and uh I, uh, I kind of, uh, I'm like, uh, I kind of want, I, I kind of like, ma'am, uh, can I just have a little bit more time to examine these, uh, here, if you don't mind? I know you've got important matters to attend to. Well, yes, of course, but, uh, you don't, don't take them out of here. I'm, I'm still not convinced that these aren't worth something. And, uh. She, she begins to lean closer to this, uh, this clump of, of these mineral banana things on the table, taking a closer look. Whoa. And she looks like she's counting them. I think there's one missing right here. And she points out this slot where one of them has, you know, where she's pointing out all the different parts where they've popped off. And, uh -huh. and then if you count the ones that are laying there on the table, there is a there is one of the holes that uh, is not accounted for. Okay. Well, ma'am, uh, I'll Someone see if I can have, find it. 
Someone must have stolen one of these. My the foreman at the the site here told me that uh, these were these were all accounted for before. There's a thief working amongst our my workers. I'll okay. I'll pay you even further if you if you're able to locate them. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'll do what I can, and I'll look into that matter as well. Uh, and so I, uh, I want to take a closer look at the bigger piece. Uh, and uh, I kind of want to not do the same. Th like, I just want so to kind of like pick it up and like move it around and keep, see if I can see Keep that in thing. mind for a second. I'm going back to James for, for a minute. Uh, okay. James, would you walk into the, the cellar behind them or uh, are you continuing to look at the fountain? At this point, you've kind of both caught up to where you're where you're at. Um, I, I'm kind of still still eyeing the grounds itself. Okay. Um, so I noticed the the cellar door. Um, or I, I'm, I as I'm eyeing the grounds, I would hope that I notice the the cellar door. But if if I don't, I'm still kind of looking for something that looks kind of out of place. Okay. Um, yeah, you would have um, you would have fought or seen them walking off to that cellar door and know they went in there. Uh, studying the fountain any further, you're not finding anything. Any evidence of uh, vandalism or any activity at all is all concentrated right within the fountain itself. Okay. There's um, no, there's no the gouges case. anywhere outside of the fountain, only on the rim. Okay. Um, knowing that, I would try to, try to meet up with my partner and uh, see what he's up to. Okay, um, so the guards would let you in. They understand that you're you're working together with uh, uh, with Enid and, and some of the investigation here. So you would walk in just at this time when uh, when Earl is starting to take a closer look at uh, some of these minerals. So uh, you, you can say anything if you'd like, but Earl, uh, what were you wanting to look at further? Uh, that bigger piece that's there on the table. Uh, I kind of want to. I can start see over. more you, of that you, liquid. You cut out. Start over. <laughs> uh, I said I want to t pick up the big piece and uh, try. Oh no. Or the liquid. Try to what with the liquid? <laughs> Is it doing it again? Yeah. Thanks. You're just kind of freezing up a little bit here and there. It's it's generally not too bad. It just happened two times real quick there though. <laughs> uh, I want to pick up the uh, the bigger piece mm -hmm. and uh, move it around and see if I can see more of that liquid inside of the heart. It is what looks like to me a heart of it based off of that image. Um, okay. And see if there's anything else possibly that I can notice from there. Um, so picking this up, it's got some heft to it for sure. Uh, getting a better look at it, you see the layers of these banana shaped mineral things, uh, you know, all throughout this, this rock or, or whatever it is. Uh, but there's nothing else in there that you can see. It's just this um, this rock is almost like cocooning these other small little gems inside of it. Okay. Um, so I uh, look over at James and I'm like, there's something, there's something sinister about this. And uh, I kind of like show him some of the smaller pieces, show him the, the jar of... Uh, the liquid that came out of it okay. and kind of open the lid and like let him smell the sulfur yeah so um, Enid is still standing in the room by the way she's keeping very close eye on everything you're doing uh, but when you pick up that jar you're able to open it up and it definitely still smells very strongly of sulfur and just this foul smell um, and it's still very slowly oozing out of the side of this little mineral formation and as it's oozing out across the jar it begins dissolving before it even touches the edges of the jar so like as soon as he opens up that jar i'm just like i kind of give this like almost quick wince of like ah uh, you know kind of recognize the smell and uh you know i kind of look over my shoulder to see that that mrs carrington is still in the room and uh so i kind of whisper to earl and i'm like uh there's something going on here and it's it's definitely not a normal case like this is not normal and i, I kind of hope that he's kind of picking up what i'm saying by you know not just saying that this is kind of an out of the ordinary case but it's 
another paranormal case kind of thing. Like, I'm getting those vibes. And, uh, and I kind of nod my head to him and I look over at, uh, Enid and I say, ma'am, uh, we're going to go out on the grounds and do some more investigating, possibly look into who may have taken one of these minerals. Uh, and we will, uh, let you know, uh, sometime here shortly, uh, what we find. And, uh, I kind of, uh, wait for her to say something. If she doesn't say anything, I turn around, pat my partner on the back and head towards the, the, out the door. So. All right. She just says, of, of, of course, whatever, whatever you need investigators, uh, you're, you're able to get in touch with me here. I think you have the number for the construction site. We had the, the telephone line put in already. Uh, if I'm not here at the construction site, I, you also have the number for uh, my house, my residence back in Arkham. And yes, with ma'am. that, she, she walks out and, and leaves you to it. Uh, you do notice that she talks to one of the guards out front before she walks away. I want to listen in and hear what she says to that guard. Roll listen. If, uh, if both of you are trying to listen, both of you roll listen. Oh, this is not going to be good. Well, it's good for him. Right. Um, so James, you're able to hear her quietly say, uh, make sure that nothing leaves this room. And then she walks away, her nose in the air. <laughs> so what's uh, your next steps? What are you doing? So, uh, I kind of... She's listen. out of... Ear- oh, oh. When she's out of earshot and we're away from those guards. I kind of lead him towards that, around that path, the uh, fountain, um, trying to stay away from other people so that way they cannot hear me. But I tell him, I say, look, she mentioned to me that her son is studying the occult and what's going on here seems like an occult type thing. Um, the not every day that we come across strange looking minerals that smell like sulfur. This is something's up with this and I don't like the feeling of it. So, you know, I kind of, I kind of nod my head to him and I'm like, you know, I, 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 I fully agree. Um, and I tell him, you know, if, if, if you had five minutes to stare at this statue, you'd realize that there was something that hit this thing awfully hard like this just wasn't some single act of pushing it over and it falling you know this thing was hit with some force and there's some some gashes in the in the actual lip itself like something was trying to tear into this thing and um and then i kind of mentioned to him i'm like hey and also um you know she's keeping a real close eye on on whatever's in that cellar that you guys were looking at because she just told that guard that uh to make sure that nothing leaves this, that room so uh that's what she was speaking as she walked out. Yeah, she's she's awfully concerned about those minerals, and I'll be honest, the only people she's going to be able to sell those to is cult members, and on the possible black market, if you will. Uh, but uh, that's why I've been trying to get her away. <laughs> uh, for the last little bit to try and look at these a little bit more intently. Um, and so, uh, yeah. And Earl, don't forget that, uh, James wasn't in there, so he doesn't know anything about like how one of them is missing or, uh, oh, yeah, 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 that yeah, she, yeah. she wants a you know, part of the job is, is, uh, to try and retrieve that or at least find who is responsible. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I mentioned that to James, I, I say, James, you know, one of those pieces from that big, big chunk is missing she really wants that piece back and she thinks that somebody here on the property has stolen it she seemed to have blamed the foreman awful quickly um there must be some tension going on there we need to look into as well so and she said she would reward us handsomely for finding that missing piece but i'll be honest like if this thing's got anything close to what happened to the corbett house attached to it I don't think anybody should have it. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I mean, what do you want to do next, James? I mean, it seems like we got to go around these grounds here and talk to some of these people. 
So uh, I asked Earl, and I I kind of asked him if he um, I say you know Earl, did you did you happen to get a sample of it for yourself, or do you do you know offhand what what it was actually made out of? I know we smelt the sulfur, but I don't I don't know exactly what it is. Um, I was hoping you'd kind of steal a sliver of it for yourself, um, but if if not, then we need to uh, need to very carefully walk these grounds and and try to see what we can see. Yeah, and uh, uh, I was going to take a piece of it, but when she was hovering over my shoulder, I didn't want to take a chance uh, because honestly, I, I need to research this more and uh, see if we can find someone that may know what it is. Um, and, but if we could find out who took the other piece, we could possibly hold on to that piece until we find out what it is. And if it's something good, if it's all right, then we'll just make sure she knows who it was and make sure that, uh, we, we return it. If it's something that's bad, I, I think we ought to keep it to ourselves. Yeah, I think you're right. I also think that uh, that if we would have took it without knowing, we might have put ourselves in a little bit of a danger. So I'm glad you didn't get a piece of it just yet, but I would really like to know what it is. Yeah, I agree. So uh, I, 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 I tell him, I said, let me go talk to the foreman, see what his side of the story is, because she, she thinks that he's the one that probably took it. Um, and let's go from there. Did you, uh, did you by happenstance get her son's name? Did I get her name, Keeper? No. Or his name? He did not. And okay. I'd like to, like to also mention real quickly, um, I forgot to say this earlier, uh, my fault uh, completely. One of the reasons Enid contacted you is because she called the police to investigate. They didn't come up with anything at all. So they, they saw the... Uh, know everything that you just saw basically and they were like well there's nothing we can do about it we don't know what this is we were you know file a report and that's it and now she's co contacted you because of uh got a good re reputation at this point um so i uh, i also say we need to talk to this this foreman we need to go to the police station maybe see if they have any reports of anything that they may have found i mean if they didn't find anything at all, one little clue could lead us to the right point. Um, I mean, let's not leave any boxes unchecked on this one. I agree. Um, whenever you talk to the foreman, see if you can get a name out of him for the son. See if yeah. uh, what he's what he's been up to and and kind of what their relationships like based on the outside eye. Okay. So I guess I head up towards the main building. To see okay. if performance out there. All right. While well, you're doing that, James, what are you doing? Are you following um, him or anything else you're doing? Yeah. Inside? Yeah, I kind of, I kind of want to, want to follow him. Okay. But um, I'm kind of like roaming. My eyes are just kind of roaming, seeing if I can see something that just kind of looks odd, or, or you know, I mean, I understand that she's a, she's a pretty wealthy woman, but I just want to see if there's something that just kind of looks out of place or anything. So are you just staying in earshot, basically, of? Uh, yeah. Girl? Yeah, more or less. Okay. Um, if, if they're in the room talking, I kind of want to just be standing just outside, kind of watching around, looking to see what I can see. All right. Um, yeah, so, uh, Earl, the, the foreman's pretty easy to make out. Um, you can, you, you know, after observing some of the workers or maybe asking one, you can see which, which, uh, which one of the construction site workers is, is calling the shots, basically. Uh, so I'm assuming you approach him? Yes, sir. And, yeah, uh, I go up to Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I just go up to the foreman and said, "Sir, are you the foreman here?" Yes, that that would be me. Uh, Bob Woodhouse. Nice to meet. Nice to meet you. What can nice I do to meet for you? you? Bob. Uh, well, my name is Earl uh, Walter. Getting what happened with the fountain here and uh, a possible uh, missing item of uh, Miss. And uh, just wanted to ask you a couple questions about the last few days. Sure. Go ahead. Uh, what can I help you with? So, 
When the, did you guys notice anything a couple of days before this incident happened? Did uh, anything, uh, anybody strange come by? Or, uh, did you happen to notice anything out of the ordinary? No, I can't say uh, I saw anything out of the ordinary. No one's suspicious either. I uh, just showed up one morning to work and Mrs. Carrington was down there screaming her head off and found that statue broken. All the other stuff in there too. Right, and uh, do you happen to know anything about those pieces that she found that she locked away in that cellar? Nothing. I've I've never seen anything like that before. Okay. Uh, well, um, let me ask you this. Uh, she mentioned she had a son um, at Miskatonic University. Do you remember his name? Uh. Uh, Mrs. Carrington's son. Uh, you must be yeah. talking about uh, William. William Carrington. William. Okay. Did has William come by here at all uh, during this construction phase? No, I, I don't recall seeing him around here. Okay. He's uh, uh, from what I hear, he's rather un uninterested in uh, the Carrington business. He's a, he's uh, at Miskatonic. Okay. Yeah. Uh, she mentioned that. She you know, he's down there all the time. I just didn't know if he had come around here at all. Um, also, uh, do you did you ever happen to go down to that cellar uh, in the last, you know, day or two? Well, of course. I um, I, I helped move the, the whatever that thing is in there with a couple of other workers. Okay. And, uh, um, you know, everything was... Or nothing missing in that room down missing. there. Nothing missing that I, I I know of. Okay. Um. <laughs> terrible. This. Um. Oh, you're fine. I uh I go well. Why Mrs. Carrington is so adamant about those pieces, even though it could be what. Possibly wrecked. Well, they're they're valuable, or they look valuable, as it seems. I uh, I don't know other than that. I don't know what the things are. Okay. So uh, at this point, I kind of step in and and I kind of take my hat off and I say, "Sir, um, who exactly has access to that cellar at any given moment? Is that just open for the general public, or does she keep it locked, or or?" Um, who, who has entry into there? Right now, no one. She's got a, a few guards there. Um, and I, I'm sorry, you, you must be the, the other investigator? I, I don't think I yes, got sir. your name. Yes, sir. My name is uh, Mr. Oliver. Oliver, nice to meet you. Uh, uh, Bob Woodhouse. Uh, Good to meet you, sir. Uh, you as well. But as I said, no, one, no one's been going in, in, in or out of there other than you and Mrs. Carrington. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, and of course, myself and the, the couple of workers that uh, carried those that rock and pieces in there. Understand? Um, can you can you describe to me um, the the personality of, of William Carrington? Um, what what is he like um, in the little time you met him? I, I I think I've met him in passing just for a few seconds once. I, I've never talked to him personally. I'm just a foreman at this construction site here. I don't. I don't have any any business otherwise with the Carrington. Understand, sir. Appreciate your honesty. Of course. Um, and then I look back at him and I say, "Sir, uh, if you don't mind me asking, uh, have you uh, had some trouble with Mrs. Carrington?" <laughs> have I had trouble with Mrs. Car Mrs. Carrington. It's a uh, the complicated question. She's a uh, very strong-willed woman, and uh, don't get something 100% perfect the first time here at this site. Sh you'll you'll hear about it. You get quite the tongue lashing. Uh, it's understandable, of course, but uh, no other confrontations or anything of that sort. No. Okay. Um, what about your workers? Have you have you noticed any of your workers having a confrontation with Mrs. Carrington? Not that I recall, no. 
They uh, yeah, it, it, they all seem to seem to fear her a bit. Um. Now I'd say this project of hers is costing her a pretty penny. Am I right? Could say that, of course. Uh, they are a very wealthy family. It's it's uh, probably nothing to them. Okay. Um. And, and would 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 anybody here be unhappy with uh? with you, any of your workers be unhappy with you, or possibly the work, the wages that they do, that they are receiving? Not that, uh, I, I, I haven't heard any such complaints. Um, I am kind of upset with one of my workers myself, though. I, uh, Alfred Hackett, he's, uh, didn't come in to work this morning, and now that I'm thinking about it, he was one of the ones that helped carry that rock into the cellar. Uh. The other, the other one I think was uh, Jeremy. Uh, that's Jeremy Malone and uh, Alfred Hackett. But Alfred's not here today. Do you uh, do you know where Alfred lives or where he's been staying during this construction? Yeah, yeah, of course I do. Um, I can give you that information uh, just because you're working with Mrs. Carrington. Uh, otherwise, I'd, I normally don't hand out my, my workers' information like this, of course, but he's staying at a hotel nearby. Um, yeah, Board and Arms Hotel, uh, 488 West High Lane. Uh, and that's on the north side of Arkham. All right. And uh, I, have, I appreciate your time. Bob, I really do. Uh, of course, glad to help. If, if you see anything or if you hear anything that may be a little bit strange or out of the ordinary, you let us know, okay? Sure, I can certainly do that. And uh, and I tell him to have a good day, and I motion to James and kind of walk out towards the parking lot there and uh, want to pull him off to the side and ask him so what do you think you think uh this alfred character is uh, a suspect into who may have taken the, these items i think that uh in the the short amount of time that we've been here we've got uh several pretty strong leads that i think we should uh we should follow up with um but before we start tracking down individual leads i think we should stop by the police station and see see what they know if if at all, she says that they didn't know a whole lot and they decided that it was not worth their time, so to speak. But I'd just like to speak with them, see what they know. I think that sounds like a good idea. So, um, I guess we'll stop by the local PD and then head towards um, the address that Bob gave us. All right, um, both of you give me a law check and... Uh, that's to see if you already have a contact ex established that will get you you know, right in where you need to be. Uh, why didn't I put more points in the law? Oh, nice. Uh, looks like James, I got this. You, you passed it? Yeah, I got us. All right. So, uh, James, hacking. yeah, you, uh, you have a contact <laughs> at the police station that uh, is able to direct, direct you right to the officer that was uh, assigned to investigate this fountain. Um, so you're, you're able to get into the police station and, and get a few minutes to talk to this police officer. His name is William Hancock. William Hancock. Yes. Okay, so uh, the so guy. We are, oh, hold on, I just, I, just, I just, I just gotta let this be out there. The guy building the construction site, Woodhouse, and the guy at the police station is Hancock. Okay, sorry, I just had to get that off my chest there. <laughs> that, that big old <laughs> stack chest of yours there. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so. Uh... Yeah, go ahead. We're, we're in the accompaniment of uh, of Mr. Hancock. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, you, you're approaching him now, basically. Okay. Um. So, uh, so we approach him, and, and you know, I, t I take my hat off, and I uh, I say, uh, Mr. Hancock, my name is uh, Mr. Oliver. Um, we're uh, 
this is my partner, Mr. Walters. We're investigating a, uh, a vandalism um, up at the Carrington House, um, and I understand that you were the officer in charge writing the report for that. Um, might I have a word? He shakes both of your hands and says, Well, sure, I, I investigated that. Uh, what, what can I do for you? What, what, what information do you need? It was, it was a dead end. Um, sir, we were um, we were just kind of investigating the the nature of, of the vandalism itself, and um, we're just kind of looking at it from all angles. We're trying to see you know uh, any information that we can get. Um, sure, sure. What can you tell me about um, what you saw whenever you came on scene and you give your initial report? Well, probably the same thing you saw. Uh, there were some large uh, gashes of some sort, chips in the the fountain itself. The statue was knocked over, and culprits seem to have left some sort of strange rock. Who knows? Uh, just a bunch of loonies out there in the marshes. You know, it was odd, though, that it almost seemed like whoever did this just flew in, wrecked the fountain, and then flew out. There was no tire tracks, no other footprints that were out of place. No, I'm sure you saw yourself that there was no scratches or anything even outside of the fountain where those uh, the chips were on the rim. But we couldn't figure anything out. It's uh, just a case of vandalism. The insurance company will handle it. Nothing else we can do. Yes, sir. I, I agree that the, the situation is uh, is is quite uh, quite odd. Um, so you you saw the uh, the the rock in question. Um, yeah. Where where was it located when you saw it? Well, there was a big metal door built into the side of uh, this cellar or the the stables or garage, whatever that small building is. But uh, it was sitting in there. I couldn't tell you what the hell the thing is, but it was in there. Um, can you tell me how many pieces you saw, or can you remember if there were, you know, any detail like that? Uh, I, uh, it looked like a whole cluster of these, the, those little, I guess they're banana shaped. I don't, I don't know what else to call them. But it, like the, the banana shape itself looked intact for the most part. Well, there were a few pieces broken off. I guess they were. Uh, Mrs. Carrington was was taking a look at those. Uh, but I can't say I counted the individual pieces. I wasn't concerned with that. Um, uh, that's that's very understandable, sir. Um, can you tell me who and all you interviewed from the grounds itself as part of your report? Was it just Mrs. Carrington, or did you interview several people on the grounds? Well, we we asked around, did our uh, you know, our, our due diligence, and talked to the other workers there, but uh, nothing turned out of it. No. No fights between any of the workers, no no motive for uh, any of this vandalism. All the workers seem decently compensated and happy to be working there for, for the most part, despite uh, you know, some of the harsh words from Mrs. Carrington at times. Yeah, she, uh, we, we've had our interactions with her as, as well, and I can, I can attest to what you're saying. Um, is there any way that I could have a copy of your report? Uh, you know, I, I really, I really shouldn't. Um, you're, a, you're a, a private business, essentially. I, I can't just be handing out uh, those sort of things. Um, go ahead and so, roll, roll a either persuade or charm. I'll let you decide. Um, roll a charm. Okay. Failure. Um, yeah, he, he he doesn't say anything else. He just kind of trails off and shrugs it off. Okay. Earl, uh, I saw so I look back at Earl and I ask him if he has any questions for the man. We, do, do you happen to know um, where where she got that statue from? Uh, it was uh, Italian, I believe. Okay. I think that's about all the questions that I had that 
Sir, uh, thank you for your time. Glad to help. I've got to get back to work here in a, another minute or two, so uh, there's nothing else. Kind of looks yes, back sir. and forth between you two. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Hancock. Uh, we'll be in touch. And I shake his hand and I put my hat on and, and I kind of motion as we leave. All right. Yep. And he shakes your hand in, in return. So, what's next for uh, Oliver and company? So, I, I look at, at Earl and I say, um, you know, uh, I would love to have got a, a, a copy of that report. Um, it seemed like he was uh, dodging a lot of the questions that we had. Um, not that it it seemed suspicious, but it just seemed like there was a lot of information there that we could have tapped into that we didn't. What do you think? Uh, I think that we need to figure out why is the biggest thing. Like, why, why the vandalism? Why now? And from who? Um, I believe that uh, we need to go talk to this Alfred guy and then possibly travel back to Arkham and Miskatonic University. And so if you talk to the police, uh, you're in Arkham. Oh, okay. It, it would have okay, been okay. the Arkham police that came out. Ipswich is a rather small town. They maybe have a okay. sheriff, but um, Arkham police would have come out there. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I tell them we need to go, go, go talk to Alfred, or find Alfred if we can, um, and then we need to go to Miskatonic University possibly and look into and question her son and find out what her son knows. Or maybe some of the professors there that uh, teach these uh, occult things. So, but we may want to do that after we have the piece. So, I don't know. I, I agree with that. Um, also, do you catch where he said it, it was like something flew in and knock that statue over. Yeah. Um, I noticed that. It does seem a little bit odd. So, I mean, what we're looking for here, it, it's not sounding like anything that I've ever seen or heard since we've been, we've been studying. Um, maybe you have more insight on that, but we'll, uh, we'll go on with our next lead and we'll see what we can find. Yeah, I agree. Um, so, uh, I guess we head on our way to the, uh, hotel that Alfred was supposedly staying at. All right. Um, so at this point, it's, uh, probably about mid-afternoon. You know, you took a trip out to Ipswich, uh, did your investigation there. That was probably the entirety of the morning. Traveled back to Arkham, talked to the police, and now it's mid-afternoon. Um, so you do have that address, and you are able to find this hotel. Um, there is a, a front desk there. I'm assuming you're you're going there, or what, how do you, how are you approaching this? Um, yeah, so I go up to the front desk, and uh, I talk to the clerk there, and I'm like, uh, Hello, uh, we're looking for uh, someone in particular. Right. There's a, uh, a very small and petite woman. Uh, sitting here behind the, the counter um, and she looks up at you and and says uh, what what exactly can I do for you? It looked like she wasn't really paying attention to you. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, my name's uh, Mr. Walters. Uh, Earl Walters. Uh, we're, uh, we're trying to find someone that supposedly is staying here. Uh, he is a construction worker. Um, working up in Ipswich during the time of being, and uh, he uh, um, he's supposedly staying here at your hotel. His name is Alfred uh, Hackworth, I believe. Or I'm, was that it? I'm sorry. And and why are you why are you looking for him again? Uh, well, number one, his employer is uh, very worried about him. It's unlike him to uh, just skip. Uh, apparently my audio is skipping out again. Um, oh, it's uh, he, unlike... was saying it, he was saying it's my audio. Um, but, 
we're lo- his employer is looking for him, and he asked us to come check on him. Um, so we're trying to find out if he's here, if he's all right, things like. That. Well, I don't, I don't know if I should just be giving away information like that. Well, I mean, why, why would his employer be sending you? Who are you to, uh, to this man? Uh, we're actually uh, investigating something that's going on there at his construction site. Sort of a crime, and <laughs> investigating. I'm train of thought. No, it's all right. You're investigating, are you police? No, ma'am, we are, uh, oh, uh, um, no, ma'am, we are, we are private investigators hired by, hired by the, uh, what's, what's her name now? Uh, I can't even remember her name. Enid Carrington. Yeah, Carrington. Um, when I'm having all these issues, it makes me freak out. Um, oh, you're doing fine. It's all right. Um, he was saying and, I, I, my audio was skipping. You're you're fine. You're good. No, my my whole browser crashed, so I just had oh, to okay. reload it while talking. Yeah, no no worries. Um, but uh, but yeah, Eden Carrington hired us to to um to investigate something that's going on, and we believe that he may be involved in that. And plus, is he didn't show up for work today. Well, do you have any uh, sort of identification for this private investigation? Uh, yeah, we pull out our uh, private eye investigation cards. Okay. He takes a look at those and eyes you up and down. And says, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Alfred Hackett is probably who you're looking for. He's a, he's a construction worker. He's just uh, recently moved in for the, the Carrington construction from what I know uh, he's uh he's over in uh, in room 10 <laughs> anything else that's that she ends her sentence there <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, I said uh, uh, have you seen him this morning? Well, no, I, I, I don't believe I have today, no. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, we'll go and check up on him and see, see what we can find. Of course. Uh, let me know if there's anything else I can do to help you, uh, investigators. He gives you a little grin. He seems to seems to have gained a lot more interest than in you too since you said you're private investigator. Uh, I'll come back with an apple pie later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so then uh, I guess I guess I try to start leading down towards room ten. Okay. All right, you're you're able to find that room easy and easily enough. Uh, what do you do? Uh, I want to, uh, peer, see if I can peer in the window, uh, first and see if I can see anything. Um, and then I want to, uh, kind of like pull James off to the side and be like, be ready for anything. This guy may run on us. So I, I kind of nod to him and I say, yeah, you know, I, I agree with you. And I kind of check my pocket and make sure that my, my 45 still hammer down and ready to roll and I follow his lead. All right. Uh, so do you knock on the door or are you trying to kick it down? Well, first, I, first I want to peer through the window. And oh, yeah, see that's if I right. You did say that. Anything. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a hotel room, so you'd have to go back outside. Um, to uh, oh, take it oh. to the, so it's like internal, yeah. Okay, I was thinking old school, like one, like one little building. Um, okay, but then yeah, so I'm not gonna try and do that then. Um, I'm just gonna knock on the door then. Okay, there is no answer. 
uh, and I, not, and I, not immediately. It doesn't. After a few seconds, there's still no answer. It seems. Okay, so then I knock again. Alfred, Alfred, ha uh, what is it? Hack, hack it, hack, hack it. Alfred, hack it. Uh, open up. We just have some questions we want to ask you. There's still no answer. All right, so. Can we hear any uh, rummaging James. around the room or anything? Uh, roll a listen check. If you're ah. listening at the door. Hope you really wouldn't say that. <laughs> you got it. Nice. Better than I did. <laughs> cool. All right. Um, when I'm on it. You are completely certain that there's no noises coming in from inside of the room. You hold your ear up against the door, and it's completely still. You don't hear any noises coming from the other side. And it doesn't seem like a particularly thick uh, door, so you're you're sure you could you'd be able to hear through it. So I kind of I kind of listen in, and I'm 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 talking to uh, to Earl, and I say, Hey, um, do we do we want to make entry into this place, or do we want to leave it at this? I tell him, are, are we on one level? Uh, yes. Yeah, it's okay. a, it's like a long building with a hallway running down the middle of it uh, with rooms on either side. Okay. So I tell him to go outside. Look, look, James. I'm going to try and bust down this door. And I need you to go on the outside just in case if he tries to go out the window. Uh... I've got a better idea. What if I try to pick the lock? If you think you can, um, we can do that. I would like to try to pick the lock, Keeper. Sure. Yeah, it's a locksmith roll. Nice. All right. Um, and ah. so I'm I'm also assuming that you guys probably have a, a lock picking kit. Um, I think it's very likely after all the experiences you've been through and stuff that you would you would have one. Uh, so yeah, you're you're able to pick the lock. Um, so Earl, you're, it sounds like you don't need to do your plan anymore. Um, yeah. You're probably explaining your plan and what you want to do, and then James, you know, you you turn around and James has popped the lock open on this door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I only went with that plan because I was pretty sure that I would pass that check. Just saying. <laughs> But uh, so I swing, uh, I swing the door open, and, and I kind of look at him and kind of smirk, and I say, "After you, sir." <laughs> well, as I as I step through the threshold, I pull out my thirty-eight, just to be, just in case this guy tries to fight us. And um, uh, well, I have my hand on the holster. Um, I'll say that, and. Um, just walk through, check my corners, check the bathroom, and see if we can find him. Find anything in here. Okay. Um, it looks like a pretty typical hotel room. There's a bed, um, probably like a small dresser, a bedside table, uh, a small bathroom in there. It's it's nothing fancy at all. Um, you can tell it's he's definitely been living here for the the duration of this construction job. Uh, you know, you can see some evidence of like muddy boots at the front door. Um, and it's it's a very lived-in looking hotel room right now. Uh, Alfred himself is nowhere in in this hotel room right now. Um, I want to hmm. look around and see if I can see anything of his uh, personal effects that may hint to either where he's at uh, or if there if I notice anything that may look like the minerals from the uh, the construction site in this room. Okay. Um, James, what are you doing meanwhile? While he's doing that, um, we don't we don't have an, a window that looks outside this door, correct? Outside of the door, there's a window opposite uh, side of the room from the door that looks out probably onto a parking lot. Okay, so we can't see if anybody like would come down the the hallway and and try to come into the room, correct? No. Okay. Um. Yeah, I want to. Uh, 
I want to kind of stand at the door and, and see if I can listen for anybody that may be approaching to try to come in the door. Um, I'm kind of keeping guard more or less while he's rummaging around. Okay. Um, yeah, Earl, you're able to find some personal effects and things. Nothing uh, unusual, though. No uh, evidence of any occult activity, if that's what you're looking for. Um, and you don't find uh, this missing gem general or, or whatever it, it might be. Um, you do notice that in the sink of the bathroom, uh, there's a scrub brush next to it, like something had been, like there was some heavy duty cleaning being done on something. Um, can I notice, uh, I want to take a, uh, a piece of like paper towel or toilet paper and try and wipe that brush off and see if I can notice whatever that is. Uh, sure, so ex can you kind of give some uh, explanation about how, how exactly you do that? So like, I'll, I'll take a, um, so like, you said on the brush there's like a residue of something being cleaned off. So what I wanted to do was um, take uh, a piece of paper towel or uh, like toilet paper and wipe that brush and see if... Um, okay see if there's any residue that comes off with it and see if I can, like, notice it and yeah, like, there's figure a, out what it is. There's uh, something grainy on there, but it's that's about all you can tell. Does it look like anything that could have been a seller? Like, maybe he was cleaning off his boots? Could be. It's, it's, it's hard to tell. Um, beyond just being something, some sort of fine graininess that... You know, it could be dirt, sand, some sort of rock. It's hard to tell. Okay. You're pretty sure to tell any further, you'd have to take it to a scientist and have them actually check under a microscope. Okay, it's that small of a residue. Yeah. Um, I was, yeah, for some reason, I was thinking it was, like, caked on there for some reason. No. Nope. Um, uh... So I, I tell James, I said, he's definitely been somewhere now. This could be from the construction site or it could have been from that cellar, but we need to figure out where he's at. Um, I go, uh, so like after checking through like some of the drawers and the dressers and things like that, there's nothing that I see um, out of the ordinary, um, like, no. Nope, nothing like that. Um, seems like pretty typical stuff for a, a, a man living in a hotel room. <laughs> okay. Um, can I... Uh, are the boots by the door, or are they not there anymore? Uh, no, there's no boots by the door. There's just evidence that there's some muddy boots that are probably routinely placed at, near the door. Or muddy uh, footwear of some sort. I, I want to try if I can notice footprints from the muddy boots that he may have put on and see if he out to the parking lot to possibly a vehicle something that he may have uh, okay so you're trying uh, to you're trying to track from his room to uh like a parking space or something or a right. particular vehicle yeah yeah that's going to be really difficult to do um uh Roll, roll a uh, tracking, but with uh, disadvantage applied to it, because that's going to be something really tough to, to pull off. Uh, minus one or minus two? Minus one. Okay. Ah. Uh, nope, no Yeah, good. no. So you, you step out a few steps out the hallway, and you lose the track almost immediately and can't find anything further. The one thing I got... No, I'm just kidding. Um... <laughs> Okay. Um. Yeah, I I told James I said uh 
Let me go to the front desk and ask that lady if she knows what vehicle this guy drives. And so, do I... Do you need me to, uh, need me to stay in the room, or do you want me to uh, follow you? You can head back to the car and keep an eye out, um, see if you can notice Alfred, uh, or someone who made like Alfred. Uh, I understand. So, uh, so I lock the door, and as we leave, I, I make sure that the door is actually indeed still locked, and I shut it behind us. That way, it looks as if nobody's been there. Okay. Sounds good. So, uh, I head back to the front desk, and uh, I kind of, like, lean over the desk, and, uh, um, and like, uh, ma'am, um, do you happen to know what kind of vehicle Alfred drives? Well, Alfred, uh... I don't think he drives a vehicle. I think he uh, either rides with his co-workers or, or takes a, a taxi everywhere. He, I think he has a bicycle too, but he doesn't have a vehicle of his own. Um, Not that I've seen. Okay. Um, did you notice anybody coming by to pick him up this morning? Or did he ever come by last night after work? He, um... Maybe he, if he, is he not, he's not in his room right now, I'm assuming, by the way you're asking me this. I, maybe he slipped out while I wasn't at the desk here. Um, but no, I haven't noticed him go, pass by with anyone else recently. Um, he, he did come, come back here last night. I do remember that. Um, I, I, I can certainly give you investigators a call when he's back here again. Uh, please. Uh, I write, uh, or I, I, I make sure she's got my business card on her, and um, and then I say thank you for your time, and I just walk out and head towards the car. Okay. And James, you would see him walking away. Are you following him? Uh, yeah, I was. Uh, I was making my way to the vehicle, kind of as we we left anyway. Okay. All right, so um, she has uh, has your number. Um, she would have, uh, before you walked away, int formally introduced herself as uh, Miss Pansy Osborne, so that you, Pansy, you have yeah. her name now. Yep. So uh, she has your number, and she'll be giving you a call at your office whenever uh, Alfred's back in there. Uh, what would you like to do now? It is probably sometime in the evening now. Um, we'll say it's a, it's a Tuesday in September. Early September in the evening. And you're in Arkham. So I look at Earl and I say, um, you know, we've been doing a lot of this studying into um, Mrs. Carrington <clears throat> and her son. What do we know about Mr. Carrington? Uh, yeah, but... So, Earl, before you respond, I will uh, let you both know that uh, you probably would have done a little bit of research up front real quick on the Carringtons, as I had mentioned about Enid Carrington. Um, so you would know that uh, her wife, or her wife, her husband is uh, William Carrington. Um, or I'm sorry, not William, that's it, her, <laughs> her son. Milburn Carrington is her husband. Um, and he is a millionaire banking magnate, uh, spends most of his time at the office from what you've heard, um, or, you know, making various business deals, uh, elsewhere. Um, but other than that, it just seems like he's handed complete control of this construction site and everything and the building work over to, uh, his wife, over to Enid Harrington. Uh, other than that, that's, that's about all you really know about him at the moment. So, it seems that it's not the husband we should be studying into, but the wife and the son. But I believe we should gather a little bit of information on the husband just to round out our, our knowledge of the situation. Just make sure that there's not any uh, ends there that we need to, to tie up or, or to, to look out for. What do you suggest is our next move? Well, it's getting awfully late. Uh, I don't think that we'd be able to... Go to Miskatonic and investigate the sun. Uh, 
I will, uh, I'd say that now that it's getting closer to night, let's head back to the destruction site. And let's do some investigation when not everybody's around. I agree with that. Okay. Sure. So are you are you you're doing that tonight? Going back out to the construction site? Yeah. Yeah. Because yes. uh, want to try and see if we can do a little bit more grounds investigation uh, while there's um, hardly anybody there. Because I'd assume that the construction crew would be going home. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're able to make it out there. Uh, it's uh, early nighttime right now, and you pull up to the construction site there around the side of the house. Uh, you can see in the headlights of your vehicle, uh, if you, well, I'll, I'll let you, uh, you know, play it however you want. Do you want to pull up further to the house, or are you kind of starting at the, the start of the road? Uh, you talking about the house that they're building, or... Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll let you. You're you're pulling up to the the construction site now. Where where are you parking your car? That sort of thing. I don't know how close you want to drive up to it. Um. So I, I look at I, I look at Earl and I say, you know, I'd rather kind of sneak up and 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 kind of just just stealth our way around through this. I don't want anybody to know that we're here. Yeah. I mean, I would just park it on the side of the road and then. Um, probably, uh, I, I believe, do I have, I didn't have that. Um, well, a... what are you looking for? I thought that I had a, a, like, kerosene lantern or something, uh, but I guess I didn't. I, I'm assuming you've got some sort of lantern or a flashlight, yeah, that, that's fine. Okay. In your in your car, I'm sure you've got something like that. Yeah. So we uh, that yeah, that's what we want to do. Is we want to get like a, something small that's not gonna you know draw okay. too much attention. All right. Do you, do you drive up to the estate itself, or do you stop uh, you know at the the turn in for the the road that leads up to the construction site, and then walk from there? Um, I'd say we'd. Uh, I don't know. We would probably just stay out outside of it and just try to walk in and see if there's anything that we can see on the way in that we probably missed when we drove in the first time. Okay. All right. So yeah, you're you're walking through there. It's a rather warm night, late summer. The ground is very soft just everywhere here because it's, uh, you know, a lot of marshland around here. So the ground and soil is just in, in general very, uh, uh, retains a lot of moisture. So your, your steps, if they're heavy enough, will kind of stick to the ground. So you hear the suction noise as you're stepping through this mud in the dark. Um, you've got, you know, your lantern or flashlight or whatever light source as you're, you're walking through these, these cops of trees, uh, these, uh, you know, not much foliage uh, on these trees here in the in the marshes, uh, <clears throat> but lots of hanging moss, that sort of thing. And there's uh, this the thick air just has this, uh, as I mentioned before, this decaying vegetation smell to it. Uh, so you're able to walk down the road up to the uh, estate there, up to the construction site, and. You don't notice anything out of the ordinary on your walk. Uh, it's a pretty typical dirt road leading to this construction site, and uh, that's uh, that's it. So, what do you do once you reach the building itself? Is the uh, is the building itself is is it one story or is it multiple stories? Oh, it's it's definitely multiple stories. You, uh, it's just the frame uh, put up now. There's not even really a, much of a roof on it yet, but it's a rather large structure. It, it looks like it's going to be a, a a mansion of sorts, and it's standing there in the in the moonlight and in the mist of the uh, the marshes. It just looks like the a skeleton of a man. The That's rose nice. garden you can see behind it is uh, stands out quite a bit with the the marble fountain and the the red roses. 
Okay, so there's there's nobody that we can like see as far as like I was making sure that there was not you know like lights on in the in the house like it wasn't a completed room. Uh, not from um, here. Uh, you can't see the entirety of the rose garden or the uh, the cellar or the building behind it. You can only see the in in your view right now is just mostly the mansion or the the frame of this mansion. Okay, so. Uh, you know, as we're walking up, I kind of make a, a hint to Earl, and I say, "Hey, you know, the the only place that we didn't really look into the last time we were here was the gar uh, was the the garage and the garden. So I would like to to look at both of those locations and see what we can see. Um, if there's any way we can kind of sneak our way around to to check out those locations, I believe that those are two things that we should we should lay eyes on." Okay. Do we notice? Do we notice any anybody around? Like anybody from the construction site, or uh, maybe even the Carringtons around? Not that you can see from here. Uh, there is a car in the driveway, though, in front of the in front of this house. Did uh, do I recognize the car from earlier this afternoon? Morning? Yes. Yeah, if you were paying attention to the cars there, this this is a uh, one of the vehicles that was there earlier. Okay. Um. I I, I look at Jane. What do that was here? Um. This morning is here now. Uh. And uh, I mentioned to him, you know, we might want to double check that cellar, make sure that they're not trying to get their hands on another piece of. Uh, that mineral. So, um, understanding that knowledge, uh, I want to make my way to the cellar door, and I want to see if I can just listen through the door and hear what I and see what I hear. Okay. Uh, and you mentioned you guys are trying to sneak around. Are you still doing that? Yes. Okay. Uh, both of you make a stealth check then. I don't know. Oh. Wow. <laughs> wow. We both had 50%. We both failed so, it. We both sneak around the door uh, and smack well, each other in the face. Um, yeah, so you're you're creeping around the, the outside of this building here. Uh, maybe trip over some, some roots or, or maybe some construction materials and it make a bit of a noise. So as you're coming around this building, uh, you see over by this door, this cellar door, there's a light lit over there illuminating these three figures. Um, Three guards there in front of the door still. Uh, they immediately bolt up, hold up a lantern in your direction, and shout, Who's there? Who's out there? Uh, I holler back, Don't worry, it's just us. Uh, uh, Oliver and company, the private investigators. We're, we're just out here trying to do some late night investigating. Well, you come down here and we, we need to see some identification or something. Identification. You saw my face earlier this morning, and I walked down. And I, I, I point the the lantern up to to our face. Is this not uh, enough for you, you buddy? Get, you get closer, and you notice that these are three different guards. They must have some sort of shift change. Okay. So mm -hmm. I then when I notice that, I don't be all cocky and stupid. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, 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 I just pull out the. Uh, I, I pull out from my. My pocket and uh, the uh, one of our business. Okay. Hand it to them. All right. Um, so one of them takes it, and the other two are just staring you guys down. It looks like they've uh, they all have like shovels and those sort of things. There's there's no like guns that they have. Um, he looks at the the uh, card you hand him, looks back up at you, and then hands it back. Yeah, we we heard about you too. Uh, you were here earlier. Uh, we. We do shift changes on this guard duty. It's I, I don't know why she wants us guarding some stupid rock or whatever the hell that is in there. Uh, I'm noticing the shovels. I I, I ask him. I say, uh, let me ask uh, you guys, you fellas, a question. Uh, if y'all are bodyguards and protecting something, why do you have a shovel? Well, the shovel. Uh, there's a pickaxe over there. I think we got an axe laying over here. We're we're supposed to be guards, so I guess we need weapons of some sort. But uh, uh, I'm not risking my life for for whatever's in there. 
Well, uh, those don't seem like uh, seem like weapons of choice uh, for bodyguards. Would you t would you say? Oh. And yeah. uh, unless uh, Mrs. Carrington's gonna give us some uh, proper weapons, we'll, we'll make do. I'm I'm just here to do a job. She said to keep watch on this door, and we're keeping watch on this door. Were you uh, were you hired? Uh, were you hired from a, a, an agency, or uh, were you hired just off the street? Um, how did she come about you all? Well, I, I work through a construction agency. Uh, I know some of the workers around here, they, they have their different ties to the Carringtons or, or, or whatnot, but uh, I think most of us are through some agency of sorts, working under the, the foreman here. Okay, so you all you all are contracted through the foreman, not through the Carringtons directly. Yeah, most of us, I think so. Okay. Uh, well, do you mind uh, letting us by here and uh, into the cellar? Yeah. Uh, for you, you can go in, in the cellar. Uh, Mrs. Carrington made it clear that you're allowed to go in there and investigate. Mm -hmm. uh, so go right ahead. Okay. So uh, I guess. Uh, once they clear the way, I just look back at James and nod my head and just start walking in. Yeah, and I follow. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, you see pretty much the same thing you saw earlier in here. Um, the rock might be shifted around a little bit from where it was before. Maybe uh, Mrs. Carrington was in here looking at it again, but um, I count otherwise. Huh. Yep, you count the pieces and you, you come to the same count that you did earlier. One is still missing. Okay. Okay. Um, and is this room large or is it light or medium size? Is there other ways around it? I mean, like, are we just in like one small little little cubby area, basically? Um, it's just uh, basically just a, a small square cut into the you know this hillside. It's uh, um, seems very very fortified, I guess, for for lack of better better terminology. It's uh. It's underground, uh, but there are, uh, you know, uh, brick walls put up to, to support everything, but it's, it's not a very large room. It's, okay. uh, I'd, I'd almost call it, uh, like, the size of, a, like, a medium shed or something. Okay. It's like um, a storm trailer kind of deal. Yeah, yep. Um, I look for any hidden trap doors or just weird things that we might find um, that we... You know, or little small cubby holes, um, kind of yeah. like what we experienced at the Corbett house in the basement. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, so. James, is there anything you'd like to do, or are you helping out as well? Yeah, um, I'm I'm helping them out as well as kind of you know just just listening around, just kind of trying to see if I can, you know, maybe hear something that the guards are talking about. Um, if they have like anything to say, if they're just making small talk, if they're just sitting out there not saying anything. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. Um, you search for maybe an hour, um, less if you absolutely want to do less than that. But I think an hour would be a good thorough search. Um, and you don't turn up anything unusual. There's no trap doors or anything like that. There's no hidden switches. Uh, there's no other strange uh, objects in here. It's just all tools and uh, supplies for the construction site or the garden. Uh, you are able to hear the, the guards out there talk a little bit. There's some chatter. Um, nothing that really uh, seems relevant to the case, though. You know, there's some maybe a little bit of complaining about this or that on the job, but nothing, um, nothing malicious. Um, and they they don't seem to really talk about much else. They're they're pretty pretty quiet otherwise. Um, I want to pay special attention to the floor and see if I can. I want to kind of like, I guess I guess touch the floor like you're dust, taking your finger over something and dusting it off, and trying to see if I can see anything in relation to what we found at Alfred's. Um, hotel room on that brush. Okay, uh, so like a yeah, similar material. Yeah. Um, 
So, yeah, I'll say uh, after a, another maybe like 30, 15, 30 minutes, not a whole lot of time, uh, you search more thoroughly to try and find this material. And you do notice that the uh, the fragments of the the rock, the like cocooning rock of that uh, those smaller ones, uh, seems to break apart and feel like a sim similar uh, granularity to it. Okay, so that 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 big piece seems like that is has that grainy feel to it. Yeah, you're you're pretty sure if it's something around here, it's it's likely this same substance that he was maybe cleaning off of something. Okay. Um. James, is there anything else you'd like to do? Uh, no, sir. Uh, not at this time. Um. At this time, James is kind of thinking more about the uh, the fountain itself, and uh, kind of maybe mentions to Earl that uh, he kind of wants to go look at the fountain again after we're done here. Okay. Okay. And uh, did um, uh, I lost it now? Um, Did they say that they found in the fountain, like, as a piece that was broken off after that statue had been toppled over? It was within the, uh, those larger gashes in the fountain itself. Uh, it looks like that's where it was broken off of when you guys were looking at those. Okay, so this was inside. That, in my, in my, in my, in my mind. Uh, and I look over at James, and I'm like, this has to have come from that statue. Um, so, because there's no other explanation, this this was placed inside that statue. Um, I believe, at least. Um, so yeah, let's go out and look at the fountain. <laughs> So, so as he says that, you know, I kind of, I kind of mentioned, hey, the reason that I want to look into the statue itself is because I want to see if the base itself was hollow from the top side. I want to see if once that statue broke off, if there's something I can look down in, or if there was something it was gashing, like it was trying to pry into the the base itself. That's kind of what I want to look at whenever we go out. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, you can go out to the fountain if you're all done looking in this cellar. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so, James, you're looking at the, the pedestal in the middle there like you had just described. Earl, what are you doing meanwhile? Um, I'm kind of looking around the water, uh, trying to see if I can notice anything else that may stand out, like another, like another chunk of the minerals or uh, something like that. Okay. Uh, so, James, you aren't able to find anything uh, unusual with that pedestal. Uh, the, you see the, all the gashes and chips that you saw earlier taken, that are taken out of it. Uh, otherwise, it just seems like a pretty typical pedestal. There's, there's nothing not hollow or any trap doors hidden in it or anything like that. Um, so, Earl, you're looking at the uh, fountain itself and the, and the water, uh, and you see what was mentioned earlier with the uh, low amount of water in there. It seems to only come up to your calves. And you did also notice that there was a, uh, the area immediately outside of the fountain where there is uh, some sod and soil uh, seems to be significantly wetter than anywhere else around here. Like it, there, a lot of this water was thrown or splashed out. Okay. So, what are you guys doing now? It's, uh, Probably middle of the night now, like uh, 9, 10 p.m. The uh, guards by the, the cellar, the steel cellar door over there are, are just watching you do your thing, walking around in this fountain and stuff. I look, I look over to James and I say, uh, garage? Yeah, um... There's something I just can't put my finger on about this this fountain, but I'm gonna need a minute to uh, to really think on it. So so in the meantime, yeah, I believe it'd be a good idea for us to go and uh, 
lay eyes on the garage and the stables and uh, see what we can find in that location. All right. Right. So we head over there and see what we can find. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you uh, probably spend close to another hour searching through these uh, garages and stables here. Um, nothing unusual here uh, catches your eye either. So uh, there's not any animals in here yet, uh, but there it's definitely some sort of horse stables. Uh, it looks like they, there's uh, nothing in there for them yet, just construction equipment. There's uh, probably a tractor in there. Uh, other than that, just more and more construction equipment. Um, I'm stumped. Stumped, Earl. I don't know. I don't know what the next step is. I don't know where we go. Um, there's something odd about the colonnade. Something odd about that garden. But I can't quite put my finger on it. So what do you guys do? Um, do you uh, call it a night here and get some rest, or is there any other leads you want to follow up on uh, this night? Um, yeah, so none of those guards looked they were not the, the same earlier. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they definitely switch, uh, switch uh, shifts there for the guards. And we haven't seen any... Uh, you cut out there. You haven't seen any what? Anybody on these grounds yet? No, it seems like the guards are the only ones there. Look over to James and I say, uh, so the guards here are different. That car out there is still the same. Uh, you still got your back pocketing tools on you? Yes, and, sir, I do. And I tell him, I say, I think we need to uh, look into that car and see if that might be, uh, Alfred Hackett's car, or whoever may have dropped him off, and um, because we've not seen anybody else on these grounds besides those guards, so uh, huh? Sounds like a plan to me. Let's investigate that car. All right, so we go over to the car, and before we even lock pick it, I, I want to like look around in it and see if I can see anything. Okay. Uh, both of you roll spot hidden. Okay, um, so it looks like, James, you succeeded. Uh, before you even get close to the car, James, you can tell that there's someone in the driver's seat. Mm, so then, as, as we're approaching, I kind of kind of throw my arm over Earl's chest and I say, hey, there's somebody in that car. Can you see that? And do, do I notice him now? Yeah, if he once he points it out, you can see that there's someone in there. You're still standing uh, pretty good ways off, maybe 100 feet or so. Like, your light isn't actually touching the vehicle yet, but uh, James was able to make out that outline there in the dark of a figure in the driver's seat. Okay. Um, I say, approach carefully. Yes, sir. Uh, if you if you want, we can, or I can I can sneak up and see if I can see who the driver is. Yeah, let's do that. So I wanna I wanna kind of try to get closer, maybe like you know, kind of sneak my way up and see if I can see a face or or somebody that that make out a, a an actual picture of a person instead of an outline. Okay. Are you taking any light source with you or walking in the dark? Um, yeah, I'll take a, a small light source with me. Um, you know, whatever the light source we were using, I, I kind of take it from Earl and, and walk up there with it. Okay, uh, make a stealth check with disadvantage. You're carrying a one. Light. Yep, just one. Nice, you got it. All right, um, so <laughs> you're able to sneak up and uh, probably just. Uh, Maybe keeping your hands over whatever light source you're using, using just enough light to get across the ground and creep in there and shine just a little bit of light in the car. And you see that there's someone sleeping in there on the, the driver's side. Okay, so um, 
How far am I from Earl right now? Um, that's up to Earl. Did you follow at all? Um, I would probably follow slowly, um, being careful of the ground around me. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Then Earl's probably within eyesight, but um, uh, you'd have to talk loudly to, for him to hear you. Right. Um, so, so what I do is I kind of look back at him and I make sure the kind of lights on me to where he can kind of see my face, and I kind of make like a um, like a silence motion, and then I also make like a like a sleeping like this, okay. and I point to the car. All right. So then, uh, then I, I kind of uh, come up and try and try and be a little bit quiet about it so okay. towards the car. Roll a stealth check. Um, you don't have to do a disadvantage because you you have a little more information about the situation now. Okay. Hey. Nice, you got it. All right, so yeah, you're able to creep up there too, and you can see um, that this there's someone sleeping in there. You can't get a, a very good look uh, at the guy's face unless you want to really shine the light in there directly on him. So I look at Earl and I say, you know, do we want to do we want to approach him, wake him up, ask him questions, or ask them questions, or do what? What do you want to do here? Um, we need to figure out who it is. So I'm just worried that he's going to take off. Um, what I tell. James to do. I tell him to stay right here and make sure he doesn't go anywhere just yet. And when he sees my headlights come up across the 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 path here and get some information out of him. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the car and I'm gonna pull it up the drive. And I'm gonna block it so that way he doesn't try and escape uh, out of that way. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, James, are you just gonna stay right there while Earl drives that car up? Uh, yeah, I wanna kind of, I wanna be ready just in case um, whoever's in the vehicle gets startled and kind of, you know, tries to start the vehicle and run away. Um, I wanna be able to to make a move, whether to intimidate or whatever, but. Um, more or less, I'm just watching as, as this unfolds. Okay. All right. Um, Earl, you're able to drive the car up. James, you're sitting there watching this car, and no one gets out of it. The, whoever's sleeping in there, laying in there, still remains in the driver's seat. Earl, um, I'm assuming you get up out of the car. What, what are you doing exactly? Yeah, I, I kind of um, leave the headlights on. Just because I want to have full visual of this guy if he ends up taking out, and I start walking up towards uh, him, and I just I kind of motion him to go ahead and wake him up, and I'll go on the other side of the car. Okay. Sure, have at it. What do you What do you do? Um, I wanna I wanna ease up to to the vehicle. And um, get as get as close as I can, and see what I can what I can see before I try to try to actually make a, a motion to wake him up. Okay. Uh, do you want to shine the light in there to try and see the guy's face, or just looking in in the dark right now? Uh, I just want to sneak up in the dark. Okay. Yeah, you get a little closer. Probably just press your face up right against it, and from what you can tell, um, there's just a guy laying there. It's it's a uh, if you don't put the light in there, it's it's incredibly dark in, in this vehicle. Okay. Um, I want to raise the light up just enough to be able to kind of illuminate what's going on. I want to see if the man is actually sleeping or if he's dead. Yeah, gotcha. So you uh, raise the light slowly, very cautiously, I'm assuming. Uh, so you first see just the, the guy's shirt. His, he looks like he's wearing a work shirt. Going up further, you can start to see you know his upper shoulders. And then you see the bottom of his chin hanging open and slack off to the side. Going up further, his eyes are closed. And getting a full look at him, you see it's one of the guards from earlier today. And he's definitely asleep. He's drooling out of the side of his mouth. You know, just he's just completely out. But he's, he's alive. 
Okay. Yeah, I thought you were gonna say like <laughs> someone came in here and like leather faced him or something. <laughs> So, uh, so, so knowing this, you know, I kind of look over and I motion to Earl and I'm like, you know, hey, come here, you know, everything's good, kind of, you know, you know, and I, I motion toward him and I say, um, he's just, he's just asleep, you know, what do you want to, what do you exactly want to do with this situation? Do we want to wake him up? Um, and that's, that's kind of what I'm asking. Um, so from my side of the car, I tap on the window to wake him up. Okay. He uh he twitches at first, and then maybe you tap once more, and he he bolts up and looks looks both ways and um takes a second. It looks like he's really scared at first, doesn't know what's going on, and then he seems to settle down and recognize your faces. He he rolls down the window, maybe opens the door on the driver's side, and says, "What?" I, I recognize you two from earlier. What are you? Uh, what are you doing here? This is—it's pretty late now. What? What time is it? And he's looking at his watch and stuff. So I, I say, you know, I could ask you the same question. What are you doing here? It's change of shift. You should have been uh, gone by now. Yeah, I, I, uh, this is my vehicle. I, I drew the short straw. I'm here for whenever their shift ends, taking them home, and then bringing the other crew back out here, and then eventually I'll I'll get some sleep. I guess I. Uh, I, I don't know. I was trying to get a little bit of sleep right now. Is there something I can help you with? Do you happen to get other construction workers and drop them off too? Say that again, you cut out in the middle of it. Uh, do you also happen to pick up the other construction at the uh, end of the day? The other construction workers? Well, I, I took the, the, the guards... Uh, whatever you want to call them, we're, I guess we're guards now, we're not construction workers anymore. We, I, I took those guys uh, back to their rooms, and then I came back here, and uh, here pretty soon, I think in a, a couple hours, uh, these guys here, I'm driving them back again to their rooms, and then there's a whole other shift of guys that'll show up at that point, and I'll be able to finally get some rest, proper rest. It's uh, seat's pretty uncomfortable. So why does it fall upon you to do that? I don't know. I, I own a car. Not a, not a whole lot of these workers seem to own their own vehicles, and taxis don't like to come down this sort of road. Maybe, uh, I, you know, yeah. hoping to... Maybe it'll get me a little bit further with the, with the foreman, get a little extra cash coming my way or something. Where's, uh, where's all these workers staying? couple different hotels around Arkham. Uh, I think some of them have their own own houses here. It it, it varies. I uh, did you happen the night before last? Did you happen to take uh, Alfred home? Alfred. Uh... Alfred Hackett. Alfred Hackett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think I saw him today. Yeah. Uh, that day that yesterday we we learned about the uh, those statue and all that stuff that happened down there. It's been a mess, but uh, I I took Alfred home that day. Yeah, he's, that stays at the hotel. Uh, up in North Arkham. Well. Uh... So you took him home that day. Did you uh, drive by the next morning to uh, to see who's coming to work? No, no. Uh, we usually all all get picked up uh, at, at a different place, so you know they meet more central in Arkham. But uh, I happened to drop him off directly at his house that night. Um, but no, I, I like. Like I just said, I, I didn't see Alfred today. Did he seem out of sorts to you? No. Nothing out of sorts. He's... He's... I guess he's been out of sorts for most of this project. I, I've done some other construction work with him before. I'm not really his friend, but I, I know of the guy. Uh, 
but he's really been obsessed with that uh, that uh, Mary Carrington the whole time. Obsessed with her, you said. Yeah. Who's yeah. who's 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 uh, Mary Carrington? Mrs. Mrs. Carrington, e Enid Carrington's daughter. Uh, she oh she attends the university over there in Arkham, Miskatonic. Hmm. What about her son? Do they both go there? I think so. Yeah. Alfred's uh, he's smitten by her. He's uh, um, I I don't know if any of this is really relevant, but uh, I'm just rambling. At... Uh, no, are there any other questions you, you two have for me? I well, um, we stopped by uh, Alfred's hotel room, and he wasn't there. He wasn't here at work today either, so we thought we'd come by here see if we can find him, but yet we find you sleeping here. Huh. Um, you haven't had any contact with him today at all, have you? No, I haven't seen him since yesterday. And do you know what dorm rooms or anything like that that these uh, kids are staying in? Uh, Carrington kids? No, I, I don't know. I've never even met them. All right, James, do you have anything else for this man? No, sir. Uh, I believe we should let him let him go about his sleep. <laughs> I'd appreciate and, uh, that very much. I uh, uh, look at his person and see if he, yeah. if it looks like he's carrying anything, like weapon wise. Sure. Uh, roll spot hidden. Uh, da, 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 da. This hasn't worked at all for me tonight. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't notice anything. Okay. Um, and I, I just tell him, have a good night and, uh, Try and get some rest when you can. Sure. Um, and yeah. uh, I tell him, listen, if you see anything tonight or anything like that that's out of the ordinary, give us a call. And I hand him our business card and start heading out. All right. Yeah, he agrees to that and says basically that uh, there's guards standing there and they'll contact you if something strange happens or whatever. Okay. What do you think, James? It's hard telling, man. Um, I can't make sense of these guards, man. I, I, it's like on one hand, you know, they're telling us the truth, but on the other hand, I feel like there's something underneath. I don't know. Well, my my suspicion is is. Whatever we're going to find, it's going to be at that university when we interrogate that son and that daughter. Um, because yeah, I, didn't, I didn't know until then, until just now that they had a daughter. So that's uh, a I didn't thing. either. Um, and I, the only one that seemed to be the uh, Mrs. Carrington seemed to be upset about was her son, but not her daughter. And that's just a little bit odd if she's more about her son being there, but not her daughter. Um, I feel like we've got a lot of a lot of uh, information to stew on. I feel like we should go back and uh, and rest on it and uh, kind of dwell on what we learned today and uh, start fresh tomorrow. I feel like if we. Uh, keep on where we're going, we're just going to keep trying to imagine things out of thin air. So, let's keep her conscious about us, go home and rest on it a while. I agree. And so that's what we do, we just head back to... Well, since we're not far from Arkham, I, I, I assume we'll just go back to where we're at in Arkham. Alright, so yeah, um, you're able to go back to Arkham, no problem, you get out of the... Uh... Uh, construction site, leave Ipswich, get back to Arkham. It's probably pretty late at this point, maybe around midnight uh, when you get back to uh, your residence. Um, you guys haven't really described exactly where you stay, um, so maybe you can think about that in your downtime or whatever. 
but um, that's where we're going to leave it off for now. So uh, Earl and James take the night, you know, stewing in the information, maybe talking back and forth before they finally fall asleep to uh, wake up in the morning and continue their investigation. Um, but it's we're at just a little over two hours, so we'll end it there. Um, is there any last minute things either you, of you guys would like to add? Um, I thought for sure we were going to make a sanity, sanity check on that guy there in the car. Uh, for <laughs> for sure. I'm glad that worked because I was definitely uh, building it up like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I was uh, I was wondering where exactly that was going to go because I, I didn't I didn't know who was going who we were going to find, but uh, anxious to kind of see where it unfolds now that we know that there's more to the family than initially told. Yeah. All right. Um, I made the comment that we stay, that I actually, my character stays in the business office. Okay. All right. Yeah. So that's just, he's he's tied to his work. Yeah, sounds good. You can definitely do that. Yeah, so we, like the both of us kind of, you know, we, instead of going back home to whatever respective families we have, we just end up crashing at the, at the Oliver and Company office and we're just kind of, sitting around and kind of half asleep trying to figure out and, and clot our brain and we finally just decide to, to fall asleep as opposed to, to try to rack our brain anymore on, on what we've heard today right all right yeah makes sense so we'll continue next session with uh earl and james of uh, oliver and company and uh eis or paranormal investigation investigations to uh you know, continue with what's going on at the Carrington construction site. So thank you everyone for tuning in and uh, we'll be doing a raid. So uh, stick around for that. Thanks. <laughs>